Welcome to the Virtual College Fair for all Virginia students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Counselors and StriveScan. Before we start tonight's presentation, just a very few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that you are welcome to pose questions to the panelists utilizing the Q&A button. We also wanna remind you that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And we are having additional sessions uh, this evening and also next week for Virginia panels. So you are welcome to sign up for those on that same registration website. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will also be available on that registration website. But without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, Spelman College. Hi, thank you. All right. So my name is Latrina Fisher. I'm the Associate Director of Admission for Spelman, and thank you for being here. Um, Spelman College is a historically Black college and a global leader in the education of women of African descent, and we're recognized among the nation's top liberal arts colleges by U.S. News and World Report, and as the number one HBCU in the nation for 14 years consecutively. We're located in the heart of Atlanta, five minutes from downtown, with lots to Lots to do, um, a city filled with rich history and has a large international business footprint. We're a part of the Atlanta University Center Consortium or called the AUC, which is the world's oldest and largest association of historically black colleges and universities. Um, the students that are the institutions that make up the AUC are Spelman College, Morehouse College, Clark Atlanta University and Morehouse School of Medicine. Our student body is comprised of more than 2,100 students from 42 states and 18 foreign countries. And when you take into account the AUC, you are working with about 10,000 students. But in our small campus community, students enjoy an 11 to one student faculty ratio and an average class size of 23. We offer approximately 34 majors and minors and many more avenues of study through the Atlanta Regional Council for Higher Education or the ARCH program. Uh, 20 public and private colleges and universities make up this membership and our students, faculty and staff can really take advantage of uh, pro uh, programs such as library sharing, technology sharing, and also cross registration for courses. So it really expands the reach and network of our campus community. Uh, we offer intellectually challenging academic programs in the arts, humanities, mathematics, and the sciences. And our top programs of study among our new students is bio our biology, uh, economics, English, political science, and psychology. <clears throat> so Spelman and College offers a variety of support services and programs to assist students in their academic studies, their personal development, and their overall postgraduate aspirations. So we've really tried to provide opportunities and services that uh, support the student holistically. To find out a lot more about uh, our services and offerings, uh, please go to our website at spelman.edu. So uh, when you choose Spelman College, you have made the choice to change the world. And so to that end, our Gordon Zito Center for Global Education is committed to engaging our students with the many cultures of the world. Um, approximately 70% of our students choose to extend their learning experience beyond the classroom. And they have traveled to over 40 countries, including Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, Europe, and Latin America. Uh, we also have partner institute, institutions where students can um, do an exchange. Um, these universities are in the West Indies, England, the Czech Republic, uh, Japan, and Chile, just to name a few. And we offer financial aid and scholarship assistance uh, for students interested in these opportunities. Uh, the Student Life of uh, the Office of Student Life and Engagement uh, provides a variety of extracurricular activities that serve to enhance the Spelman College academic experience. We're home to about 85 different clubs and organizations. Um, ranging the gamut from spiritual, professional, cultural things, um, organizations that match your major. And then when you combine that with uh, AUC organizations, that list really uh, extends. We, are, uh, we have uh, approximately 11 residential halls on, um, across campus and they're made up of traditional and apartment style living arrangements. And each hall has a distinct culture and sisterhood. 
where we have uh, dorm wars, stroll offs and pageants and other activities to really uh, fortify that sisterhood. And we offer several uh, live and learning communities as well uh, for our social justice fellows, our wisdom scholars and our honors program. So um, when it comes to admission and what we're looking for at Spelman, we take a holistic approach to the admission process. We take into consideration um, things like your academic record, like what school you have attended, the rigor um, you've taken in your courses, your extracurricular activities, your community service, employment, and demonstrated leadership. This year, test scores are optional. Uh, so you can um, choose to submit them or not. You'll still be considered for scholarship. Uh, we do not have minimum criteria to come uh, to be accepted in the Spelman, but we do have an average admitted student profile, and you can see that there on the screen. And we do look at the weighted GPA. Uh, with tuition and scholarship, so our cost of tuition uh, hovers around $44,700 per year. We are private, so students in state and out of state pay the same amount. But over more, uh, more than 85% of our students receive some form of financial aid assistance. We offer several uh, merit scholarship awards that you can see listed on the screen there. Um, they range from full pay, the presidential and W. Johnson Roundtree scholarships are full pay. Uh, and then the others range for um, full tuition down to specific amounts. Uh, you'll be automatically considered for these opportunities in your application. So you want to uh, put your best self forward. In that, in that application. So here you can see our deadlines uh, for new first time students. You have early decision, early action, and regular decision. You can apply on the Common App. You require a $40 fee. And again, those test scores are optional. There's a lot of different ways to engage with us online. We are virtual right now. So um, um, you can follow us on our social media handles here. I am Latrina Fisher, the Associate Director. My email is listed here and there's my picture and I will be happy to help you all if y'all have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Spellman. Um, as we move on to our next presenter, just a reminder to anybody who recently joined us, you're welcome to post questions to any of our presenters utilizing the Q&A button. Up next is UC Berkeley. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Joa Howard. I am an assistant director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of California, Berkeley. I am the territory manager for Virginia, so I will be your point of contact, and you can reach me through our contact us page, through our admissions page, and I look forward to hearing from you all. All right, so uh, UC Berkeley, we are a four-year public institution. Uh, we are the flagship campus for the University of California system. See all of our sister campuses located here as well as Berkeley. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with most of our uh, different campuses. We always encourage you guys to do a little research on each of us. We vary in some really significant ways from campus size, student population size, academic offerings, and so forth. So definitely you never know what may be the best fit for you. Uh, however, we do share one main commonality in that we all share the UC application. It is the only place you can find any of our campuses if you all intend to apply. Now, Berkeley, we are located in Northern California, about 25 minutes outside of San Francisco. You can see the skyline of the city from our campus. It is quite beautiful, uh, but we're also about 12 minutes to Oakland. We're about 45 minutes down to Silicon Valley, which is a big draw for a lot of students. 45 minutes up to Napa Valley and about 40, about an hour and a half to the state capital, Sacramento. So you're very centrally located near a lot of resources, whether that be for internships, research, um, job opportunities that you can take advantage of. And then Berkeley is a mid-paced college town, very eclectic, very creative, a lot of theaters and cafes and so forth. So it's really mixed, wonderful mix of uh, pace for students that they once again really enjoy while being on our campus. Now, what makes Berkeley one of the top public schools in the world, hands down primarily are the students. We have over 30,000 undergraduate students. We have over 11,000 graduate level students comprising all 50 states. Um, U.S. territories in about 90 different countries. It's a very global community. 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, so you're looking at about still 70% of your classes being 30 students or less. So we do a lot to keep it very manageable for you guys, um, which is very important so that you have access to resources and access to your faculty, whether that's through office hours, through our residential program for faculty, and you're engaging with them in the dorms. So a lot of ways to still have that, that access. 
Now, our academic program is broad. We have over 300 different programs throughout our undergraduate and graduate level programs. On the undergraduate division, you will see the five colleges in one school reflected here. College of Letters and Science, that's the largest college, has about 75% of our undergrad students. Broad range of majors from your arts and humanities, your biological sciences, your physical sciences and mathematics, your social sciences, and also interdisciplinary study majors. We also have one of the only colleges of chemistry in the nation. Um, which has one of our smaller colleges has three different majors, including chemistry, chemical biology, and chemical engineering. College of Engineering, that is our most competitive program to be admitted to, one of the best programs in the nation, which is why it's so competitive. Very broad range of majors, very hands-on, very innovative. College of Environmental Design, that's where you have architecture, urban planning, one of our other smaller colleges, great advising team, wonderful studio space. Rouser College of Natural Resources, oldest college in the UC system, oldest major being forestry. So if you're thinking about something in environmental sciences or health sciences, maybe going to medical school, this will be a great college to um, research. And then Berkeley House, our School of Business, second oldest business school in the US, one of the top ranked. Excellent program, one major business administration, but you can specialize within it, whether it be finance, accounting, and, and so forth. We also have a lot of dual degree programs between either our School of Business and our College of Engineering, and also programs with universities outside of the United States, like with Sciences Po in France, and also the University of Hong Kong. So a lot of great options. Also, research is heavy on our campus. A lot of programs you guys can be involved in from URAP, Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program, which you can apply for as a freshman every semester, and it allows you an opportunity to work with faculty one-on-one, -on -one, no matter if you're a STEM major or you're a humanities major. Also, SEED Scholars. This is STEM Excellence and Equity and Diversity, four-year program, funded program for students definitely coming from under uh, represented backgrounds, students who are from marginalized communities and helping you not only be involved in research, but also prepare and apply to graduate school. So just a couple of great options for you. Student life, equally thriving. is a lot to be involved in. As you can see, we have over 1,200 student groups and organizations, whether it's academic, cultural, um, performing arts, it's a, little, it's a little everything there, not to mention Greek life. One place you can also find community on our campus is through our residence hall activities. Housing theme programs are wonderful. We have programs for our African-American students, for our Native American students, for our students a part of the LGBTQIA plus community, our Unity House. So we have a lot of options there to once again find community on our campus. You know us as Cal, you definitely know we have a long standing tradition in athletics. We are division one, part of the Pac-12 conference, 30 different varsity teams. We also have club sports that compete nationally and intramural sports. We kind of have three tiers that you can participate in. And then admissions, we practice a holistic admissions process, looking at everything in the application that you guys submit from your unweighted weighted GPA to extracurricular activities, strength of your curriculum, all of it. Now, one change to our process this year is that we will not be considering your ACT or SAT in any of our admission processes, not even for scholarship consideration. So that is a big shift but we will still consider your, your subject exams, your AP exams and IB exams. So if you wanna show your aptitude in a particular area, please feel free to do so, all right? In addition, your personal insight questions, these are essay questions, these are a little different. There are eight questions, you guys have to answer four out of the eight short answer responses, 350 words, treat them like an interview, tell your story, be authentic, okay? Now, Finally, just the timeline. Our applications are live now, strictly online. They are self-reported information. You don't have to send us any transcripts up front right now. Tell me what I need to know. November 1st, you can submit the application. The month of November is your window to submit, deadline being November 30th. We will notify you at the end of March, and then you have until May 1st to tell us yes or no. And thank you guys so much for my, your, my time. Please engage with us online and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, UC Berkeley. Up next this evening will be Western Carolina University. All right, thank you so much, everyone. My name is Susie Swartz. I'm Senior Assistant Director of Admission at Western Carolina. Hi, yes, my name is Adam. I am an Assistant Director in our Office of Undergraduate Admissions and happy to be with you all this evening. So we're going to jump right in to uh, just a quick overview of Western, who we are, and a little bit about us with some quick facts. 
So we are part of the University of North Carolina system. We're the westernmost school in that system, and we are a four-year public university located in the beautiful Cullowee Valley in North Carolina, uh, about an hour west of Asheville, North Carolina, and not far from the Tennessee, Georgia, or South Carolina borders. Um, we're right where the Blue Ridge and Smoky Mountains meet, so if you are looking for a small town college experience and like the idea of going to school in the mountains, we could be a good fit. We are a medium sized institution. So we've got about 12,000 students, including graduate and distance students and about 4,500 of those students live right on the campus. Uh, we also have a number of students living in the immediate vicinity um, within uh, about a mile of campus in off campus apartments within easy walking distance or um, short shuttle distance uh, from campus. You can see a little bit more about our demographics there. Um, and there are tons of different opportunities to get involved um, on our campus. We offer 120 different majors across six different colleges, everything from the health sciences to education. We were actually founded as a teacher's college back in 1889, a wonderful college of business, um, majors in the fine and performing arts, um, forensic science among uh, some of our more unique programs. Um, so a huge range of majors to choose from. And we've got 170 different clubs and organizations and are especially known for our outdoor um, adventure activities um, given our location. A couple other things I wanna mention, we have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio and about 64% of our classes have 30 or fewer students. So we really pride ourselves on being able to offer hands-on learning opportunities opportunities, um, instruction um, that is um, personalized um, with a lot of support from faculty and um, giving students opportunities for learning uh, by doing through research, internships, and other uh, projects. So many of you probably have a planner or journal that houses many college and university important application dates, and we hope you'll include these in that item. But as it relates to Western Carolina, our first year application process includes a $65 application fee. We do have fee waiver options, which you can investigate through our application fee waiver website. Your high school transcript is another key piece in that equation. And in this current application cycle, we are practicing a test flexible option. What that means is if we can render an acceptance decision on your application without having to look at the test score and more or less relying on your academic GPA and grade patterns, we will do so. And so we will not necessarily need to consult the test score to make that decision. If you are dual enrolled, please keep in mind that we will need a transcript from you, but for the initial application review process, we will not more than likely require it. If we do need it, we will reach out to you and let you know that. Lastly, in terms of supplemental information, essays, resumes, and letters of recommendation are not required for a complete application. However, if you are wanting to submit them, you may do so, and we will have an email address at the end of the presentation for you to do so. Okay, just a few quick deadlines uh, to keep in mind, and there on the sides you can see a few uh, more highlights um, from our campus um, and our uh, student community. So our early action deadline is coming up. It's November 15th, and that is the deadline to receive an admissions decision no later than December 15th if your application and all materials are received by that November 15th date. The final final deadline to apply is February 1st. So as long as we've got all of your materials by then, we'll be able to give you a fall 2021 decision. That is also our scholarship deadline. Um, there is a separate application for um, most of our scholarships. There are a small number of merit scholarships that you could automatically be considered for with your application to the university, but the vast majority are going to be through that scholarship application. Um, we also recommend that you fill out the FAFSA no later than January 1st. That is our priority filing deadline um, to get the maximum amount of uh, institutional aid. Um, and then lastly, if you are super excited about Western, you get accepted and you decide that you um, would like to um, come and be a catamount um, here in Cullowee, um, you would submit your tuition and housing deposit it's no later than May 1st to secure your spot. The last piece of information we want to share with you this evening, I mentioned an email address you can send supplemental information to. You may also send general inquiries to the same email address, admiss at wcu.edu. Susie and I have included our contact information on this slide, and we were able to resume on-campus visitation opportunities. So, 
If you would like to take advantage of those, we offer in-person tours Monday through Friday, as well as our open house events, which we are offering two this semester. If you are still uncomfortable or, or just would rather not participate in on-campus events, would like to still learn more about Western, you may do so through our virtual options. We have virtual tours showcasing academic and student life. We have one-on-one -on -one counselor meetings that you can benefit from. And then we have a lobby that you can log into Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Western Carolina. Um, our next presenter this evening will be American University. Hi everyone, my name is Beth Dragone. I am one of the assistant directors of admission at American and typically I recruit students from New York City and Long Island. Um, if you want to um, get in contact with a representative for Virginia students, uh, you can reach out to Michelle Stinson and her um, contact information is on our admissions page. Uh, so as you probably know- Sorry, just to let you know, we're not able to see your screen if you're trying to oh. share your presentation. see now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so as you probably know, we're located in Washington, D.C., um, but I always like to talk a little bit more about our location because it is kind of unique. We are about four miles from the White House or the National Mall, if you're familiar with the D.C. area. We are located in what's called Northwest D.C. So where we are, we are surrounded by um, residential neighborhoods. We're on Embassy Row. We're right across from Homeland Security. So it's kind of an exciting spot to be. Um, it's really nice for students who may be looking for the best of both worlds. You want the traditional campus feel. So you want the green space, you want to have a quad, but you still want all the access to such a vibrant city. So um, we, like I said before, we do have a quad at AU. Um, the designer of our campus was Frederick Law Olmsted, who designed Central Park, so a lot of park-like areas. Uh, but then at the same time, we are the only school in DC that offers students what's called a U-Pass. So you have free unlimited access to the entire metro system. So it makes it very easy to get around the DC area, out to Northern Virginia, Maryland, wherever you may need to go. Um, as I mentioned before, we are a medium-sized university. I don't know if you're looking for a really big school or a small school at this point, but we're sort of right in the middle. So we have right around 8,500 undergraduate students. Each year we bring in a first year class of about 1,800 students. Um, even though we are a little bit bigger, one thing we really pride ourselves on is keeping our class sizes small. So typically you'll be in a class of about 15 to 25 students. All of our classes are designed to be discussion-based, so it's not just listening to a professor lecture. We want you to be a part of the conversation and share your ideas. Um, we're a pretty diverse campus. That's sort of one of the missions of the university moving forward. We have about 30 to 35% of our students identifying as students of color. We have all 50 states represented, over 120 different countries represented. We have students from different socioeconomic backgrounds, religious beliefs, political beliefs. So just being in the classroom with these other students, participating with them um, within the campus community is definitely an educational experience for our students. Um, I won't go into a whole lot of detail about every program at AU, but um, you can see here that we have six different colleges and schools within the university. Uh, one thing I always like to mention that's probably different from a lot of other colleges and universities you might be applying to, at AU, we don't have separate admission requirements for different majors or different schools. So when you're applying to the university, you'll list your intended major, but it's almost as if I'm blind to what that major is because I'm reviewing you for the university as a whole. So if you're admitted, you can start right into that program, stick with it all four years, or you know, if you decide it's not the right major for you, you do have the ability to change majors and change schools within the university very easily. Um, double majoring and minoring across schools is very common. Also, um, all of our programs are designed to be interdisciplinary, meaning regardless of your major, you can take advantage of um, you know, taking different classes across the schools. 
Internships are a big thing for our students. Um, most students will end up completing three or four before they graduate. Um, and we find that more than half of our students will have at least one firm job offer before they even graduate. Um, another kind of popular thing for our students is studying abroad. Our students enjoy learning about other countries and other cultures. So close to 70% of our students will end up um, spending time abroad. So we have over 150 different programs to choose from, 50 plus countries, six different continents. We have three different AU centers abroad where you would be taught by AU faculty. We have a location in Nairobi, Madrid, and Brussels. So if that's something you're interested in, we definitely encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, at AU, the students are very active, very involved and engaged. Um, you can see here we do have Division I sports. We're part of the Patriot League, so we compete against teams like Lafayette, Lehigh, Bucknell, Loyola, Army, Navy. We also have competitive club sports, so you're still competing against other colleges and universities. Um, and then we also have intramural sports. We have over 150 different clubs and organizations. They range from cultural clubs, religious organizations, academic clubs, clubs related to the arts. Uh, we do have Greek life. I would say about 30% of our students are involved in Greek life. So it's definitely there if you're interested, but it's not something you have to feel like you need to be a part of in order to feel like you're a part of the AU community. Um, we are a fairly selective university. Last year, we got about 20,000 applications. Um, we ended up with a slightly higher acceptance rate of about 35%. Um, we don't have set criteria as far as numbers that we're looking for in order to be considered for admission, but here's um, a sort of an academic profile to give you an idea as far as what we're looking for um, you know, when deciding who to offer admission to. So these are the middle 50% ranges, meaning 20% of the students were below that lowest number, 20% of the students were above the highest number. Um, we will super score both the SAT and the ACT if you decide to submit them, but we are test optional. So you don't have to submit those scores. Um, we have three different decision deadlines. Two of them are early decision. One is regular decision. On the right, you can see everything we require. We very much take a holistic approach. So we're looking at academics, your involvement, um, letters of recommendation. We do have an optional YAU question that we would like to see submitted, but um, several different things come into play in the decision making process. And hopefully you will um, get to campus at some point to check us out if you haven't already. Great. Thank you very much, American University. Up next this evening is Barton College. Thank you very much. Um, so my name is Caitlin Casuda. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Barton College in Wilson, North Carolina. Um, so unlike Western, we're on the eastern part of the state. We're just east of Raleigh, so about 40, 45 minutes. Um, so we're not too far away. Um, if you're out of state, we're about two hours from the Virginia Beach area as well. Um, so just some quick facts about Barton. We are a small private liberal arts college. Um, like I said, in Wilson, average class size is about 16 students, and our total enrollment is just over 1,000 students. So we are a very small campus. Student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1 and we have over 50 majors and minors. Um, so you can see that list here. Um, the ones highlighted in bold and blue are going to be our most popular programs. Um, so nursing, business, education, exercise science are going to be our popular majors. Um, those all have a master's degree within their department as well too. Um, and so you can see all the concentrations that we offer um, but those are going to be our most popular ones. Um, we do have an honors program here at Barton, um, so that is something that you're interested in. If you've been in that in high school, you can apply for that. You'll be notified if you qualify um, upon admittance into the college as well, too. They are test optional. Um, I'll talk about our admissions as well. We are test optional, too. Um, so if you didn't have a chance to take um, the test scores and meet these requirements, you will have a chance to submit an essay that is heavily looked at um, for admissions as well. 
Um, we are Division II Athletics. Um, we are part of NCAA Conference Carolinas. Um, so we offer 23 sports, including um, cheer and dance as well, too. We just added football. Um, so if you're interested in playing athletics, you can reach out to the coach and let them know and see what the next steps would be as far as becoming an athlete at Barton. Um, some other programs that we offer besides just academics are going to be our co-curricular programs. So students who may be looking for something outside of athletics, um, these are some great opportunities. You may have these or similar programs at your high school. Um, a few of them are the college versions, um, like Future Business Leaders of America, AVID, if you're in a leadership program, um, interested in um, nursing scholars, which is an early entrance program into our nursing program. Um, so these all offer scholarships and you're able to apply for them when you apply to the college as well. As far as our admissions process goes, we're just looking at your official high school transcript and test scores. We do look at an unweighted GPA, so be aware of that as you're submitting your information. Um, we accept the ACT and SAT. Um, however, we are test optional, so if you choose that option, uh, we will let you know how many letters of recommendation are required. Uh, we do have an auto acceptance um, for students with a certain GPA. However, um, if you'd like to send letters of recommendation, personal statement, or essays, you're welcome to send those if you're not quite sure sure, uh, but let your admissions counselor know if um, test optional is what you'd like to do or if you didn't have a chance to take um, the test scores over the summer. 98% um, of our students receive financial aid. So um, upon acceptance into Barton, um, you will receive a merit scholarship. So depending on what your GPA, your test scores and letter of recommendation say, uh, we can offer you a merit scholarship. So that's one thing you know that you can receive um, as far as scholarship and coming into Barton. So we do have five different levels ranging from 5,000 per year to 14,000 per year. Um, we do have scholarships offered for our honors program as well, if you um, are interested in that. Of course, apply for the FAFSA. Um, we do have other endowed scholarships and academic scholarships that can be awarded through that process as well. And then we do have visit opportunities happening now. So we are on campus for classes. Um, so thankfully we're able to be open. We do have some online. However, we do have in-person open houses, online um, virtual tours um, that can be offered for students. So if you're interested in being on campus, we do have those offered as well too. Um, we have an open house every month, a virtual open house every month and virtual tours every week and tours every week. So lots of different opportunities to um, check out Barton and my contact information is at the bottom. So if there's any questions that you have um, about your application, check us out on social media um, or contact me for any questions. Thank you, Barton. And our final presenter this evening will be McDaniel College. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Stephanie Stoller. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at McDaniel College. Um, McDaniel College is located in Westminster, Maryland. So depending where you are, if you're in the Northern Virginia area, we're about an hour and a half away. And then obviously further down a little bit more of a distance, but we're situated about 30 miles northwest of Baltimore, Maryland, and about uh, an hour directly north of, north of Washington, DC. Also just immediately south of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, just some quick facts. We're about 1,800 undergraduates, so a small uh, college of the liberal arts and sciences uh, with 85% of our students residing on campus actually all four years at McDaniel. Uh, we are a private institution, so our students are not exclusively from Maryland. We, we get about 32 different states as well as a number excuse me, a number of different countries. Uh, we also have a great deal of financial assistance available to our students to make sure that we have a socioeconomically diverse student population as, as part of our um, demographic. Uh, as a liberal arts and sciences college, you are not applying to a specific school of when you apply to the college, you're simply admitted to McDaniel with um, just under 90 different programs of study, about 36 majors and uh, just shy of 60 ma uh, minors or areas of specialization. Uh, there's no one specific academic leaning of McDaniel. If you're interested in biology, chemistry, physics, kinesiology, computer science, math, environmental science, or perhaps you're more business, social work, education, 
political science, or perhaps in areas like uh, graphic design, cinema, and uh, theater arts. We, we have a little bit of everything, and you're not required to make that declaration right away. You have time built in to kind of explore all the different programs and disciplines that we offer to kind of find specifically what you're interested in. We actually have more double majors than single majors at McDaniel because our faculty are so conscious of working from within uh, different departments, as well as really helping to advise our students about uh, what they can do during their four years to really maximize on their college experience and help them get those marketable and adaptable skills, both short term after they graduate, but also long term um, for job market success. Uh, because of our small size, we're talking 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio and average class size is 17. And that's starting in your freshman year and continuing through your senior year. You're always going to be in small classes uh, where conversation, uh, engagement with students to faculty members and the ability to easily seek faculty members out after class to ask follow up questions is very much the norm for us. As a private college, I think it can be quite simple, sadly, to become a very homogenous population, but we're really proud of the fact that our students come from many, many different backgrounds. This is just merely a few. Um, we're 40% first generation college students. Uh, we're about 37% self identified students of color and pretty even on our male female uh, gender identity breakdown. Uh, we're not a religiously affiliated school, so we have a number of different religions represented on our, on our campus as well as about 35% of our students are federal Pell Grant eligible. Um, a number of different things about the McDaniel program. I mentioned we're a liberal arts and sciences college. Um, our core curriculum that all four-year colleges have uh, is called the McDaniel plan. Ours is highly flexible and customizable to student interests. So we are equipping you with skills that we feel are beneficial to your long-term job success, uh, areas of problem solving, persuasive effective communication skill development, being able to work well in team collaborative environments as well as doing well independently. Uh, going in a more creative and innovative thought processes. But these are all kind of categories of the McDaniel plan. And then within each, there's about 30 to 50 different courses that will fulfill that requirement. And that's where that flexible aspect of it comes into play. Uh, it's allowing you as a student right away to have a decision making as to the types of coursework you're taking at the college. Uh, the McDaniel commitment is our promise to all of our students that during your four years, you will have ongoing advising and mentorship uh, to help with both your academic and your social success and transition to the college. Um, each year there's elements of the McDaniel commitment taking place uh, starting in your freshman year where first year students are introduced to all the different academic departments we have and really having uh, collaborative conversations with our academic life office about what are their personal passions, what are careers they want to explore, majors they're already considering, what areas still need to be developed, you know, really having um, constructive conversations about how we can make sure that these four years are very intentional in their design. And the other piece of the McDaniel commitment ties in with our Center for Experience and Opportunity. All of our students are required to do two uh, experiential learning exper uh, excuse me, opportunities during the course of their four years. This could take the place, uh, this could take the shape of scientific research, internships, studying abroad, community service, many different ways, but putting theory of class into practice and helping to really build up those that resume that is going to be a very distinguishing feature for our graduates in comparison to many other college graduates across the country that they will be competing for entrance to jobs as well as uh, graduate and professional school programs. I mentioned 85% of our students live on campus all four years. Uh, with such a heavily residential population all four years, we, we really pride ourselves in having um, so many different ways to keep our students active with one another. Uh, in the first year, we, we assist them considerably in making sure they're getting to know their new community. And through, uh, we have 24 varsity sports at the division three level. We have more than 80 student clubs and organizations that really are indicative of the diversity of our students. So we have humans versus zombies. We have a um, anime make club. We have Dungeons and Dragons. We have uh, political groups, cultural groups, religious groups. Um, we have a cinema group, different things like that. And then lastly, we're a Common App school as well as our own McDaniel app. And we, our test optional have been for 12 years, not for COVID. So admission scholarship uh, test op scores are not required, but those are all the components of um, our application and admission process, transcript, personal essay, letter recommendation, and then early action, early decision, regular decision, and the FAFSA information. 
And my colleague, Kelsey Kirkman, would normally be here. She is, uh, she was double booked. So um, I filled in for her, but this is her information. And then my information is below. Again, it's Stephanie Stoller uh, from McDaniel College. And we are open for visitors, both in person as well as live virtual events. Uh, you just have to go to a McDaniel's website to find out. Great, thank you very much, McDaniel. And thank you to all of our presenters this evening. We do have a little bit of time left. So our attendees, you are more than welcome to pose any questions you may have to our panelists through the Q&A button. And I might pose a question myself. Uh, perhaps you could either share a frequently asked question that you receive with the group, or maybe um, since six minutes is not a lot of time to present, what's something that you did not include in your presentation that you'd like to share an event, a tradition, your favorite part of campus, whatever that may be. So why don't we go in the same order? So we'll start with uh, Spellman. So I think I, my presentation covered quite a bit, but um, I'd like to say my favorite part of Spelman is just the location. Atlanta, Georgia is a great city to live in, to be young in, to have fun, and Spelman is interconnected into that whole scene. So um, we are all women's college, but as stated in the presentation, you can attend courses at Morehouse College, which is an all males institution and then Clark Atlanta University, which is co-ed. So ladies, you will see the men. Great, thank you. You see Berkeley? Um, one thing that I didn't discuss are just the different virtual opportunities at, at Berkeley right now. We are definitely remote. We will be already be remote in the spring. That's already been decided. So um, for us, we've had a, a lot of different offerings for you guys to be able to engage with us virtually. One of the best programs we have right now is called Discover Berkeley. It's a virtual series going throughout the month of November, touches upon everything from admissions to specific academic programs. A lot of these different sessions have student panels, which clearly are the best resources you guys can talk to are the students. Um, so I really, really encourage you guys to check out our admissions page uh, to tie into the Discover Berkeley series virtual tours everything. So really explore all of that. It's not a lot of time today. So hopefully you get a chance to engage with us in that way. Um, and again, stay safe, guys. All right. And enjoy your senior year for my seniors. I know it's a crazy time, but try to find a silver lining through all of this and still enjoy yourselves and be good to yourselves. Hey, thank you. Uh, Western Carolina. Sure. So um, one of my favorite things about Western um, is just, I know we had mentioned it uh, briefly in the presentation, just being um, with our campus size. Um, but um, the fact that there's just a lot of heart on this campus, you walk across campus and you see purple everywhere. Um, it's just a really warm and friendly environment um, where the faculty are really invested in student success, uh, staff as well. Um, you know, people are here because they want to be here. Um, for example, behind me, um, this is really the heart of campus and one of the favorite hangout spots um, on uh, Western's campus um, where we have all sorts of different events and stuff. Um, so it's one of the places where, you know, the campus community can come together um, and um, just to be proud to be catamounts. So um, that's just one of my favorite things. It's just the school spirit that we have. Really quick, just to tie on to that. I, I'm a double alum of Western Carolina and I can proudly say that this institution, it practices what it preaches. And at the end of the day, that's what any and all of us are looking for, so. Great, thank you. Uh, American University? Yeah, um, I just wanna mention one of our traditions that tends to get students exciting, excited. Uh, we are on Embassy Row, so one of our traditions is for the students to go trick-or-treating at the embassy. So they go there and they get treats and candies from the home, homeland countries. That's pretty good. Uh, Barton College? Yeah, um, I recommend um, just go visit the schools that you're looking at um, and don't judge privates too quickly. Um, so um, we say we're private in North Carolina, but um, we do offer great scholarships and um, you'll never know if you don't virtually visit or um, come on campus. So um, we think you'll love our atmosphere, even though we are small. So if that's something you're interested in and looking forward to, um, definitely check us out. Um, I echo what Western was saying. Um, it's a great family feel on a lot of college campuses. So you'll never know that unless you kind of ask those questions and check everyone out as well too. Great, thank you. And McDaniel. 
in the world of random things that you get like identified for, uh, the Weather Channel selected us as one of the top 10 tailgating places in the country. We were the only small school. We were up against like Old Miss and Michigan and all these big schools. And they said, how on earth did little McDaniel get in there? We have tailgating pictures on campus from the 1920s. So we have the most long standing tradition and we have a bowl shaped stadium. So you actually sit on the grass that surrounds the entire stadium and drop your tailgate and watch the game and you know, have grills out and all this kind of stuff. So it's a very family oriented festive occasion, but it was just kind of nice as a small school. People don't think we have the rah-rah spirit, but we actually do and we're really proud of that. So that's what. Great, thank you very much. And thank you to all of our panelists this evening for your presentations and your additional information about your schools. Uh, we wanna thank everyone for joining us. Um, just a few quick housekeeping items before we end this session. Uh, once you close the window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask you to take a minute and complete. And also again, just a reminder, you're welcome to sign up for more sessions at the same website where you signed up for this evening session. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will also be available on that website. But thank you again to everybody. Uh, thank you to our students and good luck in your college search.